Gravel is probably the most commonly used paving material in the UK and probably the world, I would say. It's a fantastic product. It looks great with a castle or a cottage. But it's very much a Marmite thing. Some people love it and some people hate it. And that is because loose gravel tends to pick up on your feet and then you tread it on into the house so it ruins perfect floors and the like. But there is an alternative. There are several types of bound gravel. And these are types of gravel that are actually stuck down or firm down in some way so they don't pick up in the same way. And like with all these bound gravels, you can wear high heels on them and they don't penetrate, they don't scar the heel or damage the heel. You can ride bikes over them, you can push wheelchairs on them, all which can be very difficult on a loose gravel. And there are basically four different types of these. The first one is Breeden, which is probably the one I use most. And it's this lovely gravel which has chippings in it that are about sort of nine, 10 mil, and then it's got a lot of fines in it. And the fines are fine particles of marl or clay. And the reason this works as a bound gravel is when you lay it, you lay your hardcore, maybe 100, 150 mil, depending on whether it's for pedestrians or vehicular, it will do both. And then on top, you put 70 mil of this, and then you roll it down to 50 mil. And while you roll it, you flood water over the roller at the same time. And that action of the water actually brings up the marl, the very fine material to the surface and the rolling sets it. So it actually binds it into place. It does have its disadvantages. You cannot lay it on a slope steeper than one in 15 at Althorpe house, the childhood home of Princess Diana, we laid a pedestrian path down to the house and we used Breeden gravel and that was a 1 in 15 slope and that looks wonderful. I mean that is the sort of setting Breeden gravel really excels in, these grand country parks and houses, but it's equally good as a paved area. I've got it here in my back garden with the chairs and tables. We use it in pubs, restaurants, all sorts of things. For an immaculate look, the top surface can be redressed every 10 years or so. Dave and I spent a day on this terrace, raking off the top 10 mil of gravel and redressing with new aggregate, using a whacker plate before hand rolling while spraying with water, of course. It can be quite difficult to keep clean. So if you're going out into the garden, you come back with your Wellington boots on covered in soil and you walk over the breed and gravel, you will drop mud on it, which can be awkward to brush off and keep clean. You can't weed it. You cannot pull a weed out of the surface because you will break that lovely fine seal on the top. So you need to use a herbicide in order to keep the weeds at bay. And you need to use a moss killer if you don't like moss growing on the top. But apart from those disadvantages, I think it looks the perfect, soft-looking, hard-wearing surface. Another option is the tar, chip and spray. I had this in my last house. We inherited a huge concrete yard and I hated the look of the agricultural concrete. And so we put a layer of colas bitumen tar, which was sprayed over the concrete. We then threw on a dusting of chippings just to cover the tar and then when it had gone off a day or two later we sprayed another layer of colas and put some more chippings on the top. You can do it with one layer or you can use two layers or even three depending on your budget. It's very good hard wearing surface. It isn't 100% bound like a resin bond did which we'll talk about in a minute but it's pretty well firm. It has its disadvantage like all these systems. So if you've got lots of white van drivers and they come zooming in, manoeuvre around and zooming off, that continual wearing and tearing, you might get the tar exposed in places. So then you have to redo it every so often. So that is a good solution. It doesn't look as loose as natural gravel. It looks slightly fixed, but it looks much more loose than say a resin bonded gravel. The next option is this hexagon system and this one is made by NIDA and they were the first people to pioneer and promote this method and I think it's got a lot of advantages. It's extremely tough 
When you fill these holes with gravel, and you can use all different size gravels in them, it is extremely strong. You could put heavy plant over this and it really wouldn't disintegrate and it lasts in for almost forever as far as I know. Big advantage is you can lay this on quite a steep slope. You can lay it on a one to six slope because it obviously just holds the gravel in place. If you've got tart trotters or a high heel and you put your heel on the gravel, because it's all contained within the hexagon, it can't move. And that's the reason it's banned. It cannot go anywhere. So again, you can have high heel shoes, wheelchairs, bicycles, what you like, and it's very easy to walk on. Um, some people say they don't like it because they see the hexagons coming through, but that's because they haven't topped it up. You fill the hexagons with the gravel and then you overfill it. So it's just got a little bit over the top so you don't see it. With wear and tear, you might need to brush some more on occasionally to make sure you do not see it coming through. This system actually has this backing material to it. Not all of them do. And with this system, you can, of course, grow plants within it. If you like that look of lovely gravels with plants seeding through it to make it look more informal, you could do this. You could literally plant in the cells, take off the backing of that bit, and things would seed in there anyway. Weed control is with herbicide, or you could hand pull either way. Um, and you can use it with an edge restraint. Most of these gravels have some sort of edge restraint, but you don't have to with this one, but it just looks a bit smarter, I think, if you have a timber or a stone edge to it, or a metal edge even. So reasonably pliced, hard wearing, very useful, especially for slopes. And the final system is the resin bonded gravel surface. And this surface looks the most perfect. You've got the gravel completely encased in the resin and it looks very smooth and very perfect. And this is the reason I'm a little bit lukewarm about it. I just think it looks too smart. Maybe if you're in a very upmarket, smart establishment, it looks okay, but it does have certain advantages. When we did the Horatio spinal unit, uh, at the Oswald Street Hospital, we used it because the surface had to be almost pancake flat for the use of wheelchairs and hospital beds running over it. We couldn't have any fall at all because of the delicacy of the patients. And you can lay it like that. It will actually drain through it. Although it looks very impermeable, the water can permeate through the resin bonded gravel and through the tarmac if you make sure you have a permeable tarmac below. Perhaps the reasons that I don't use it very much is because it is extremely expensive. It is usually about £100 per square metre by the time you've laid the tarmac or the concrete base and then you've got the resin bonded on top. That is quite an expensive finish. So it is comparable to a high-end Yorkstone paving, if not a bit more. When you clean it, you can actually use a power washer on it, but I have known people who put it down and find that it does tend to wear away a bit with extreme power washing, but it, you're supposed to be able to clean it like that. Um, you cannot obviously grow plants through it like you do with natural gravel, it, it just wouldn't work. So this perfect looking, hard wearing, but expensive finish, and it comes in all different colors. You can choose the size of aggregate and you can choose the color. Although the resin band costs considerably more than the alternatives, in each case, you have to consider the cost of the sub base and the haulage. Really, with all these surfaces, it depends on your mindset. You know, you get those people, just like indoors, who like everything pitch perfect and wipeable and smooth, so then maybe you go for the resin bonded. And then at the other extreme, you've got the much more rustic loose gravel or the other alternatives in between. Really, there's a gravel to suit everybody out there and just pick the one that works for you and what you want.